interest in, in alternative energies goes back to about 2005 when I first met a gentleman called Stan Ovshinsky, which was then the head of a company called ECD Ovonics. Um, he invented little things like the battery in your cell phone, read, read writable CD-ROM, um, and he actually invented some other things with fuel cells and invented a fuel cell vehicle. Um, he was originally from Akron too. Uh, along with the Black Keys and Devo. The interesting th thing about him was I was introduced to this whole renewable energy cycle where you could you could take in, uh, hydrogen from uh, solar panels and then use it as a fuel in your car and then the only byproduct was water. And you look at this circle and you're thinking why are we using fossil fuels whenever all the energy we need to, to use is coming from the sun. We can take the electricity and put it into some type of mobile fuel. A hydrogen fuel cell is a way of uh, taking one of the most uh, common elements in the universe, which is hydrogen, and uh, basically breaking it apart uh, to create electrons, which uh, are what electricity is composed of. And what comes out of the tailpipe? Water vapor. You know, what's not to like? I mean, you can literally drink the emissions. It tastes just like water. It's so cool. It is uh, very efficient. It's uh, uh, about twice as efficient as uh, other uh, uh, common methods of, of energy transformation, energy conversion. And totally silent. All of this taking place in total silence. We're, we're at a very interesting juncture right now. Uh, in uh, our countries and the rest of the world, we're looking for uh, replacements, basically, of the energy technologies that we've used in the last century. But I think when you look at alternative energies, transit uh, and alternative energies are kind of intermixed because I, I think a lot of us in the transit industry want to be sustainable. We want to focus on uh, being good stewards of what we're provided for. And so even within the industry, the question was, how do we move uh, the fuel cell bus to something that people can actually use every day uh, and, and be out on the streets for 16 hours a day in a pounding urban environment. The biggest demand on a transit agency is to meet all the travel demands. So fuel cell technology lends itself very nicely to operational demands. Uh, that's a big part of this job, meeting schedule with a lot of vehicles. If you're relying on a vehicle, a bus or a train to get you to work on time, you don't really care what the propulsion technology is if it doesn't get you to where you need to be. 75% of our routes are 150 miles or more, and so this technology, the fuel cell bus, gives us the range that's necessary. Uh, for a technology to be viable, it needs to be operationally practical. It also needs to be financially feasible. Any new technology, when you're only selling smaller amounts, it's going to be higher until there's more, more product is being sold or bought, and then the prices are continue to go down. And they have been going down. What CTE is doing is raising funds, we're doing this very effectively, to build out these projects and to show the next steps. We're driving costs down. We've driven the cost of the buses down by 50%. We see maybe another reduction of 30 to 40% with greater volumes of vehicles. And we're also building stations with new grant funds that we've raised. That's what's going to draw the interest of the transit agencies. Bringing costs down, showing that the, the technology is not much different from what they're used to now. I think it's incredibly important to look at all the technology and all the ways that we can move people. And currently, there are a lot of opportunities for all transit CEOs and their properties to move forward in a zero emission platform. So if I was to speak to other transit agency leaders, other CEOs and general managers, the message is get involved. Don't ignore hydrogen fuel cell. Don't ignore battery buses. Get involved with zero emissions. Let the public know. Let your stakeholders know. You want to get educated. You want to understand what's available. You want to create a mission and focus within your agency that's about zero emission. And it starts with the leadership, with your board, and with your employees. Well, I've been uh, an OCTA coach operator for 25 years. Uh, driving this bus, I love it. It's just such a unique unit that uh, the first time I was able to drive it, it was 
a privilege. At the beginning, it was a little, you know, I was always trying to wait for the sound of the engine. There's no sound, there's no noise. My passengers love the bus too. It's so clean, so easy to drive. Way better technology than the other buses that I drove for over 20 years. At first, I, I was skeptical and I was, you know, everybody's you know, afraid of changes, any new changes, right? So um, after, you, you know, you work on it for a while, you understand the parts and the function of it, and you're comfortable with it. I mean, it's a lot easier, it's a lot cleaner compared to all the other buses where it has, you know, a lot more oil and grease. You can almost eat stuff off of it. Well, with the hydrogen fuel cell bus, I think the difference was uh, the word hydrogen and a fuel cell is not common language that we had in the internal combustion engine industry. We talked about cylinders and horsepower and things like that, that you know, words that float around the shop. Uh, so naturally our mechanics and even some of our management team was kind of wondering, well, what is this thing? What does it do? We don't really understand it. So it's just different lingo, different language. It sounds a little more scientific than the average car you know, engine component. Uh, but when we really break down the technology, it isn't very extraordinary. It isn't very exotic. It's just chemicals processing through materials, creating energy, charging a battery system, driving an electric motor that propels a bus that we already have. So what you start seeing around the world is the general consensus that we need to move to zero emission vehicles, even in transportation. It's important for London to run the hydrogen fuel cell bus because like most major cities, we have major problems with air pollution, air quality. So we need to run clean vehicle technologies to clean the air up in London to help the health of the population. Uh, China seems to get criticized for uh, their gray uh, days and their, um, all the issues that they have. Uh, they recently have put an order into Ballard fuel cell for 300 uh, fuel cell powered buses in China. In Germany, we are dependent on import of fossil fuels. And so therefore, we do believe that we will really opt for a transition to go for our own fuel, so to speak, in using electric vehicle, in using fuel cell vehicles with hydrogen as a means of storage. So it's really become an, an economic factor also. Actually, the Japanese government is offering a $20,000 credit to buy a fuel cell vehicle. See, they see the handwriting on the wall too, and a lot of other countries do too. And you know, we just need to follow that. Um, I think from a financial perspective, it's a risk of not acting now. Um, carries a, a number of problems. It, it's likely that other locations are going to develop these technologies if we don't develop them here. And, and that means that our industry and also our energy industry, our energy supply base will be left behind. Whether or not you believe in climate change, fossil fuel is a finite source. So we have to do something to use new technology vehicles. I believe hydrogen fuel cell is a way forward. We live in the United States. The United States is a fantastic country. I will say it's the best country in the world but we also are significant users of energy. To be the trailblazer of hydrogen fuel cell buses it feels absolutely fantastic. To be ahead of major other countries such as the United States feels good. And it's quite nice to be humble little me dealing with hydrogen fuel cell buses and showing the world what Britain can do. One of my favorite things to say is if you're not part of the solution, you're obviously part of the problem. You know, we, we have a lot of talk in our industry about zero emission buses and whether they should be hydrogen fuel cell or battery electric. My perspective is it doesn't matter. There's room for both. This is no longer an experiment. Uh, hydrogen clearly has the range. Um, it'll go much further than a battery bus, but what's important is both of those buses, zero tailpipe emissions. All the players together, bus operators, public authorities, uh, industry, um, technology providers, infrastructure, they work all together and to make it happen. And it's, I mean, for the sake of our kids. We are going to get back to the days when kids can go out and play, they're not gonna be left inside because they can't breathe the air. The beneficiaries of this technology are the drivers, it's the passengers, it's the mechanics, and it's our community at large. It gives us the pathway to reach our ultimate goal, which is to save the planet by reducing greenhouse gases and climate warming, and it cleans our air that we breathe on a daily basis.